Cool beans. Cool beans. Hot right, beans. Re- Hot beans. Hot beans, Professor. Hot soup. <laughs> I think that's I'm saying I'm quoting the hot pink thing. <laughs> yeah. At some point I've turned it into soup. <laughs> yeah. Hot soup. Hot pink. Hot pink. Someone else has got to have played that game. The Crayola. The Crayola paint bucket game, paint basically. Bucket. Yeah, yeah. It's just basically like here's an on or here's a digital coloring book with the fill feature. Do whatever you want. <laughs> yeah. Print out lots of copies. Everything's sort of 3D. <laughs> Yeah, Big big Ink had a hand in that one for sure. What's poppin' everybody? Hello and welcome to Popcorn Culture. My name is Ben Carlin and... Wow, my brain totally... (laughs) How many times have you been the host... (laughs) And I am your host. You're going to be today's brother Dave. We'll be in every episode. This this is what you guys are voting for. Oh, okay. man. Wow. Literally. Okay. Wow. I think it's because I I'm, I kid you not, Jay. I woke up this morning and I feel like I, I, you know, it was like one of those like springing your step types of mornings. I woke up early. I yeah. had the coffee prepped. Like mm-hmm. I had a restful weekend. I, I mean, it was like it, I was literally so excited to be like, Jay, I feel like I'm feeling good today. Yeah. I, I, you like, just like you woke out of bed and you were like, let's go. Let's go. It's like this is just. Yeah. Yeah, because it's it's a rare it's a rare occasion, um, but but I think I'm getting better about it. But like on the weekends, I am usually determined to uh, exhaust myself in some way, shape, or form. It's like, hey, this is free time. Let's use that being extremely busy somehow. Yeah. And this weekend, you know, it was busy. Had like had things going on, but I, I think I'm getting better and better, especially like in the space of the holidays, where like you know, big momentous occasions are like right there on the horizon. Yeah. Of just like sort of like letting myself like take a few steps backwards and just like chill just chill man and so but this is always my issue like when like when we go on like a vacation like even going to disney world which is so much fun like you don't get home from disney world and be like ah what a restful vacation i am ready to hit the ground running tomorrow exactly (laughs) exactly and but there is occasionally i'll find it like if i'm in vermont or you know at the beach um I, i feel like probably at the beach pre having kids yeah um you know there used to be this sort of like like i would get away from the stresses of like the day-to-day life enough to like where my brain would start like all of a sudden being like oh you have so many ideas yeah um you know it's like like let's let's go with this um and i think i'm even getting better at recognizing when my brain does that like when it's rested enough to start doing a lot of stuff yeah it's almost being like no 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 ben take a few steps back <laughs> when you're busy <laughs> you, are, you are so your bandwidth is overly exhausted yeah you know it's like don't add more things don't add more things it's yeah. okay but like but like good to know that you have reached the stage where your brain is starting to hum a little bit yeah well Which, i i it feels like so you you feel like you're at like a like a healthier mental state here as of late I think, uh, yeah, I would say so. I okay. think, I think okay. doing, doing, do, do you disagree? No, I uh, do agree. You're, you're a fly on the, on the wall of my life. No, um, there have been several things in particular that I have noticed about you in the past just month that have been like very like subtle, but like, I feel like Ben's, Ben's like a, in a good place sort of thing. Find, find, him, find him my old self find, again. So there's a couple of things. Two of them are going to be related to football. But okay. Like one, there was um, a day early earlier this season for Virginia Tech when they just like destroyed Boston College. Yes. Yes. Yep, yep. It was so much fun. It was so much fun to watch. I love beating Boston College. Fantastic it, game. It, no, it, dude, no, look, here's the thing. Yeah. I feel like I feel like for years and years and years and years watching the Hokies has largely come down to like it's like they win nail biters. I mean, it makes every game mm-hmm. fun to watch, but like rarely are you watching them like like step in and just sort of like put on a clinic against the other team where yeah. they where there are sacks and interceptions and and long passes and mm-hmm. you know like like all the fun stuff that you want to see your team do and it was just like there was no penalties it's just amazing anyway yeah, yeah so but yeah continue. it was fantastic you're right and, um but like the what was surprising to me about that was like you came in mon- in monday morning and it was like you were in such a good mood because the Hokies won and it was like i don't know if you noticed it but like i noticed it and i was like i can't believe ha- like the 
like the the hangover effect of the positivity from that football game was something I hadn't like seen on you in like years. Yeah, I, 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 <laughs> which like I was just like, this is I love how much Ben is enjoying this victory, <laughs> <laughs> especially when we ended the season like six and six or something. You know, it's bowl like, eligible. That's ben. all. Yeah, right. That's <laughs> all. <laughs> End of the season, <laughs> and <laughs> dare I say, stomping the Cavaliers. Which let me tell you, if there's a team I enjoy beating more than Boston College, it's UVA. Yeah, like that yeah. is always because like for uh, and I will say uh, this is gonna it sound like forever, especially like in the early days of Facebook or like when you were when I was at Virginia Tech. Like it like it didn't matter. You could win every game of the season, but if you lost against UVA at the end, that was all you were gonna see on your news feed for twelve months, and yeah. it was just like the like the 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 atmosphere that created the tension around that game because there was like that rivalry sense about it. Like it doesn't matter how good each team has been all year sort of all bets are off and I say that that's like if you look at the data, it's very not true. Like tech has won 15 of the last 16 games, you know, <laughs> right, 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 right. Yes. Yeah. But that means that even makes it worse sometimes because then it's almost like like I, I think, you know, so for in-state rivals for what it's worth. Yeah. You know, it's like then then when you do pull off the victory, it's like it's like it's so much sweeter for for. for yeah, yeah. For, for UVA yeah. when they win. Like but, <laughs> let me let me just say, though, because I think like this is like one of those things where I, I have uh, for a long, long, long time. I have speculated on this particular phenomenon, but like I know people. People are committed very frequently to like their alma maters or, you know, like their their college team, you know, like whatever. Like I I know that this is not like unique necessarily to where we live, but Virginia doesn't have pro sports. Yeah. You know, like like DC gets to like sort of encompass, you know, it's it's sort of like our, our you get you can pick you can you can like, yeah, you're right, like um bandwagon onto the Washington teams. Yes, exactly. And like yeah. I think I think <laughs> but the, even this speaks to how a non entity it is. But I think Virginia Beach has an NBA team like the Pelicans. Do we have an right. NBA team? <laughs> <laughs> let me look it up. How can we look, look it, it up? up. Please, let me look it up. Please do. Hold on, because, I know. because here I am learning this for the first <laughs> time know. ever. I'm um, sorry. I'm like, now I'm going to feel dumb if we don't. But, you know, um, if we do, it's they're not. Like, where on earth is the Internet button on this iPad? Okay. Um right. Let me know what you got. Pelicans, NBA. Everyone's like, you guys are the worst. I'm sorry. It's the New Orleans Pelicans. <laughs> <laughs> wow. The, is there a Virginia Beach NBA team? I, 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 quite frankly, I feel like our, our like little brother just moved out to that area. It feels like he would be all about it if there was. But. Well, I know that's what that immediately I thought about that. And I was like, I'm pretty sure since he's moved out there, he's bought tickets to a Wizards game, which would seem like the the f- the less convenient team to go see. It would feel that way. Yeah. Yeah. Um, let's see. Um, doesn't look like it. No. <laughs> Why don't I think this? I, I, was I, there one? I don't know. I don't know. And you, I mean, it, yeah, it was one of these things where I was like, well, here I am about to complain about Virginia not having any, any pro teams. No. Okay. Sorry. You're out. No, there's none. Sports teams in Virginia include several professional teams, but no professional major league teams. So okay. yeah, there are no major league sports in Virginia. Don't mind me thinking the Virginia Beach Pelicans were a real <laughs> team for a second there. Don't know where I got that idea. That's okay at all. But so the the resulting phenomenon, and this this is me attempting to appeal to the to the people who who absolutely do not care whenever we mention you know college football. But like the the what I think is more interesting if you zoom. If you zoom out and try to observe, so one of the one of the cool facets of being a Virginia Tech fan is that it is a terrible uh, location for away teams to have to come and play. Like Virginia Tech, Tech doesn't make many of like the top ten lists for like what it does in terms of like collegiate sports and stuff like that. But the list it always makes is best entrance, where they run into Enter Sandman by yes, Metallica, yep, which is mm-hmm. just epic and everybody's jumping. And then otherwise, it is just it is like sixty. I feel like the number is always different. The number I know with 67,000 people almost always a sold out crowd and just just like inexplicably loud the, yeah you the, know like the, the atmosphere at Virginia Tech always makes the top 10 lists yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. so like the number of um, uh, like false starts for the opposing offenses is usually like kept on the on like the jumbotron like letting us know like how many we've achieved in today's right, yeah, game right just like it's like we're so loud that like sometimes like the center can't hear the snap count exactly you know and it's like yeah this is awesome so it's like there's a lot of like like festivity around it like to go to a game is like a 
really big event like tickets are you know it feels like are, are sold or given away at like every like major you know nonprofit related gathering mm-hmm. type whatever uh so there's a lot of like hype and excitement around it and i think that a huge part of it is just simply because like we don't have anywhere else to direct our efforts so like yeah our attention is not split between like our hockey team and the collegiate sports and our our, our you know like nba right. team or you know the like whatever nfl team or something so what you end up with is just people being hyper invested in this like in-state rivalry and right but because it's college and it's like football is like the most popular sport it's like if you, like basketball like the other sports then are like it's not that people don't follow like uva basketball which is usually pretty good or yeah. tech basketball which is like on the rise um but uh or even like jmu football did really really well this yeah, year yeah, absolutely yeah 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 um or liberty as well or yeah. <laughs> liberty's about to get destroyed on new year's day playing oregon yeah um can't wait for that but um anyway the the thing is like because it's like it like there's no professional sports team but so since virginia tech has been like the premier football program in the area for so long and because like the other ones don't like rise up it seems like it's not even that you're not sharing competition with like others like other um professional sports teams you're not even sharing competition like with other sports yeah it's right, like yeah, this yeah. is the the thing to focus on right yeah, yeah. and so everybody does and, and so and everyone it, does you know so it's 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 like i've always wanted for us to sort of have like a team that like we could really like rally behind mm-hmm. you know and sort of be like oh yeah like i just i just have like an, an absolute and unequivocal unconditional love for you know the 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 virginia pirates yeah you know right. so to speak definitely not the ninjas but the pirates <laughs> um, <laughs> you know what i would be so on board if the virginia pirates were just there and i would be like yeah let's go let's go <laughs> let's go i'm in but you're right and like the, the you know it's it's frustrating because the commanders have been there like they're around you could be a big fan of them if you want to but then it's like the entire time we've been alive they just have not been good yeah like no you know, and it's all. so frustrating because like historically they were there was a period of time where they were but like in the last i don't know 23 years they had one season with RG3, this like phenom quarterback who got injured during the postseason, and that was it. Yeah. And otherwise, it's like, and it's so frustrating because like this past weekend, this so to bring it full circle, um, uh, I was talking about the positivity you had from Virgin the Virginia Tech win right, yeah. over Boston College. And I was like, it's like it was so fun to see you so happy about it. But then like I feel like just periodically over the past month, you'll just like start talking about football games you were watching. And it's like you have not really done that a whole lot in the past like four or five years. Yeah, no. Like, yeah, it's, it's like it's comforting to me that you are like enjoying something what almost has to be like by yourself, like just for pure interest in it. And it's like, like yesterday you like, you told me like, Oh, did you see the commanders get destroyed by the dolphins? Which I was like, it's so, it made me so happy that you like knew and I didn't. <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, cause like it occurred to me that like, Oh yeah, there was football on today. Um, but even, even that just, <laughs> it was like, it, it is frustrating to me with the Washington football team because like it was like, oh, yeah, they played the Dolphins. Of course, they got destroyed. The Dolphins are pretty good this season. And it occurred to me that like when I was in college, the Dolphins, I want to say, went on like a uh, like had a season where they were like, oh, and 15 or something. Yeah, they yeah. have been on some terrible. They have been the worst team in the NFL in the last 10 years. And sure. it's like and but now it'd be like, oh, yeah, the Dolphins good team for speed. It's like, yeah, yeah. but you know what that is. And it's like, yeah, they've done the thing. They've been at the bottom. They've come to the top. It's like, but um, Washington does not seem like they can get their act together ever I, in this regard. They've been, uh, there's 32 teams. They've been like between, I don't know, 22 and 28 the entire time I've been alive. <laughs> pretty know? much, pretty much. Like, yeah. Never, never so bad as like uh, earn the reputation of like the worst team in the league or anything exactly. like that. But like, but definitely, um, you know, even, even that, like I, I watched the good place earlier this year and one of the characters on the good place has got this like absolute love for the Jacksonville Jaguars. Right. Right. which is like the the most hilarious like uh, now again same same as the dolphins like they're good this year um but like the inside of the show it's sort of like the running gag is like of all the teams for this person right like, like, it's like why like no <laughs> like, no one is a dedicated die hard jaguars fan because there's like, no reason to be that's the joke yeah, yeah exactly yeah 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 um but yeah no it, it's it's been it's been definitely like you know it's been fun throughout the season and uh it, it, it always does blow my mind a little bit how 
Um, cause this was always true. I think even going back to like middle school, like where I remember my, uh, like across the street, you know, neighbor and like everybody who waited for the bus with me, you know, was, was all fans of like different, um, collegiate teams. Mm-hmm. And so like, you know, you would kind of go out there in the morning and everybody would always try to like, you know, rag on tech. Cause I was the only like tech fan or whatever in the, in the lineup. Uh-huh, sure. And you know, <laughs> like you get out there and everybody be sort of like, Oh yeah, do you see, you know, blah, blah, blah. And it was just sort of like, like, I don't know. It, yeah, I, but just like, general I, smack talk. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But like, you know, I used to like be able to put so much emotion into it and for better or for worse is really what it came down to where like I loved watching them win so much, but it meant that like if they did lose, it could like ruin a week for me. Sure. You know, and it was just sort of like I was but but at the same time, like this is also something I miss is like you know, it's, it's almost like how, uh, like when you're an adult, like you might ask the question, like, when was the last time that you ran as fast as you can? Right. And it's like, and like, it, it may be more frequently than never, but like, I bet for a lot of adults, you're sort of like, when I was the know. last time I just went in like ran, ran as hard as I could, like full blown like sprint. sprinted. Yeah. Just like yeah. just gave it my all. And I think the same is true with like raising my voice, which is just something that like I don't do. Like, I, I mean, like I never raise my voice mm-hmm. over anything like I, I it's just not really who I am. I don't think it's like a, it's not a big part of my personality. But like when I go back to like my my high school self and, and maybe a little bit in college, like I used to be able to like yell at the TV while watching football. Right. And it was sort of like, you know, whatever, whatever, you know, pass interference call that the ref made or whatever it was like, of course, it was bogus. And of right. course, I'm going to yeah. be like, yeah. come on, ref, you know, like, right. And it was like it was like such such a great way for this like emotion to just like pour out of me. Yeah. And, and now I think a lot of times, like e- even now as invested as I can get, like, you know, it's like, if I see like a pastor interference call, I'm like, yeah, I can see it. I can see, <laughs> I can see it. You know what? The ref, I don't want him to be receiving hate right now. You know, like, mm-hmm. like I, I, mm-hmm. I feel for the referee out there. He's got to make some tough calls. No, it, it can't no. be easy. <laughs> <laughs> um, but you know, I, I do, I do miss that. And, and it kind of goes back to uh, the, the quote we had, which I, I think I horrifically butchered, which Pope I attributed it to. Um, and now I can't once again, remember what it is, but like of all the unimportant things in the world, football is, the most important. Okay. Yeah. Um, you know, which is, which is a quote that I heard from, Oh my gosh, what, what is, what is the chain here? Um, I think from Ryan Reynolds who heard it from John green, who had originally heard it from, the Pope. Okay. Yeah. So it, 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 it's a Pope quote, which I'm now, I'm like, it's like the Michael Scott, like you miss 100% of the shots. You don't take Michael yeah. Jordan, Michael Scott. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's like I'm, I'm doing like that thing there. Um, but, but it's like, I do think this year in particular has been a really big one where I've been able to, uh, truly and completely like embrace the, the sentiment where it's like, I, I, I can watch these things. I can enjoy them. I can feel invested while also knowing that like at the end of the day, it, it doesn't, it doesn't really matter. Right. Like the, the, the term, of the world is not impacted the 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 biggest issues that we face is like a, as a collective you know humanity are not impacted one way or another by like the outcome of this game but like on some level it's like i can still emotionally like like use this as like a place to like store and and output all of these these other things that right. have inside of me awesome um, awesome yeah. so that's just been it's just been quite enjoyable well good i'm glad you're enjoying it that's super fun yeah yeah Yay. so anyway um speaking of this past weekend though we also had uh <laughs> sort of a sort of a, a a neat nostalgic occasion which is that your son luke has celebrated his sixth birthday party he sure at, did at Chuck E. Cheese. Uh, Chuck E. Cheese. Yes, he did. So, yeah, I mean, I m- remember as a kid going to, you know, just, uh, tr- you know, uh, tons of birthday parties at Chuck E. Cheese. Oh, yeah, yeah. You know, I mean, it was, it was like the, the place the, to be. The classic locale. <clears throat> yeah. And it is. Um, so we went there and it's the first time I've been there in, you know, over a decade. And this is like the first like like real birthday party party we've had for any of our kids where it was like we're we're going to a place we're inviting friends it's like a it's like a whole party it's not just like yeah we got all the relatives together and we you know we had cake but it's it's more for the parents because the kids aren't really going to remember it kind right. of thing yeah, yeah, yeah. um yeah it's like it's like one of those where i i found like a lot of the gatherings we've had for addy <gasps> it's like i still have a cooler full of beer right you know and it's like sometimes i'm like should i have a cooler full of beer at a child's first oh no yeah that's party? not going away for sure i think yeah, that's right. gonna you know as long as especially as like i think eventually these like birthday parties are going to like start migrating to your house and it's going to be like well 
yeah, definitely all the parents are going to sit around and be like, okay, they're they're over there playing. Where the the parties are like as much for you to hang out with your other parent friends. Yeah, yeah, yeah that's true. Yeah. That's true. Good opportunity. Yeah, anyway, continue. But anyway, out. so we're at Chuck E. Cheese. <laughs> And uh, they have, I guess, renovated and like completely redone it. Because I remember when we were kids, I remember it being like a very dark kind of place. Like there was low lighting. So all the things lit up. And then there was like this whole stage area with the animatronics on it. Right. That put on the, you know, quote unquote show. And they were like sort of perpetually broken and definitely had some creep factor. <laughs> yes. It, it reminded me a lot. If you've ever seen the goofy movie of like the the possum side, yeah. like, you know, like they pull over, you know, goofy and max pull over on the side of the road and the, these possums are performing and they're they're animatronic but like the, similarly like very creepy and very broken and yeah max hates it and yeah. it's like even as a kid i feel like you would go and it was like half the kids were like sort of terrified right you know it's sort of like okay i'm here for the cake but like can i just like shield my eyes now from watch like this the, yeah yeah exactly yeah um, so but the all all i feel like that <laughs> the creep factor on the like when you think about like the game Five Nights at Freddy's, it's like the reason that game is successful and the reason it found a a place at all is because the animatronics at Chuck E. Cheese are scary. Yeah. And it's like yeah. it it is like a directly like leaning into that fear for so many people or just like that creep factor. And it's just like ramping it up to 10 and adding um jump scares yeah and yeah that yeah, is yeah. that is the i mean there's there's tons of you know lore and stuff into five nights at fridays and stuff that i'm not super aware of i haven't played the game but it's like the fact that that game exists is directly related to chuck e cheese and like it's so funny if you go there now like that doesn't exist anymore no it, so it's, it's like it, it's they're like they're bright gone. and airy and, and <laughs> yeah. like light and colorful and clean and yeah it was very clean and like there's no animatronics it's just at some point you know, Chuck E. Cheese comes out like in the mascot costume or whatever. Yes. Which, uh, which yeah. they have also corrected in, in such a massive way. So I, I can't even tell, like I, I was having like a very positive experience at, at Luke's birthday party. And I can't tell if, because like, even on some level going to it, I had like a little bit of apprehension myself yeah. about being like, I'm about to go back into the lion's den. Right. Like, <laughs> who knows what's going to happen? Like maybe that, like that Chuck E. Cheese head's going to like pop off and like sparks are going to fly or <laughs> <laughs> who knows what, you know, like, um, but yeah, I sort of had it in my head like this, this, could be like intimidating but no so then they got the mascot that comes out and they've like completely like redesigned the character so it's like much sweeter looking much more adorable yeah uh, more approachable <clears throat> Which I have to say, like, you know, this is one of those things where Addy at this point in time, I'm trying to think of how many times I think she's at least twice. She's gone to Disney at least two times. I'm trying to think if there's a third time in there that I'm that I'm like completely missing out on. Um, but she's gone at least two times. And so far at the parks, you know, it's it's she's been so young that like she hasn't really been able to take in. Mm hmm any of it but while she was there you know at Chuck E. Cheese I do feel like she was and then like you know Chucky walks out and is like there for like a photo op and stuff and Addie is like like at one point in time like the sole child like standing before Chucky like watching like the whole thing unfold and she's just loving it yeah it was oh man I just thought it was so I thought it was so cute and it filled me with so much excitement for like everything oh, that is to come I know I was like I, I was watching her do that and I was like dude we're going to Disney World here soon and like a cruise and there's gonna be characters everywhere and I'm like I'm I'm so excited just to watch her interact with the characters because she's at such a good age for it. And there's going to be so many characters oh, that yeah. she's going to get to interact with. Yes. I think, so. I think one of our dinners is like a frozen themed dinner. Oh, and she's, yeah. she's all about Elsa and Olaf at the moment. So yeah, I think she's just going to yeah. absolutely lose her mind. Going yeah. to love that. That's going to be awesome. Yeah. So uh, overall I thought Chuck, so it wasn't just that like the, the airiness and the cleanness and the lightness and the redesign. They've also like, change the way in which you can like play the arcade games yeah, and stuff yeah. like I've been to a bunch of like kids arcades and stuff and it, they sort of have just sort of like the, the other places have updated the old format in terms of like getting rid of the tokens or the quarters and just like putting stuff on a card yeah but it's yeah. still very like pay as you go like yeah put in you know um five dollars get you know 20 tokens or whatever and that that now it's just on a card instead of having a physical thing and instead of having physical tickets it just goes to the card but like they had updated it here to the point where at least for the party like you had just unlimited plays on the cards I, like you just sort of pay up front a set amount and then it's just like yeah let the kids run around scan their card as many times as they want and then they what i think guess they've done is just like scaled down the amount of tickets you can win per thing sure which like doesn't matter so if you get like you know six tickets it's suddenly like i was a lot of tickets right but right. or i don't know a lot it doesn't it doesn't really matter the point is like i remember being there as a kid and like 
feeling like the stress of like, I've only got like, you know, seven tokens left. So I really have to like pick and choose what games I want to play very carefully. And, and you're you always know. trying <clears throat> to balance the like, like what is the ticket <clears throat> potential from this game versus like how much of like a gameplay experience am I going to get? Like for me, yes. I, would, I would not play any games that didn't offer tickets. Like, it's yeah. like, I'm never wasting a token. Oh yeah. Even, even if it meant like, Oh, you get to go and play this one for like three to four minutes. It's like, no way I'm not doing that. Like, right. You know, uh, if, if it doesn't give you tickets and then you want something that's going to give you like at least, you know, hopefully eight plus tickets per, per token right. injected or whatever. So you want to be able to like, you know, rack some stuff up. There's like the game where the spinning light goes around in circles. And mm-hmm. if you, if you can like nab it right at the right moment, like you win 75 tickets or whatever. Right. Yeah. Jackpot. And but that's the type of thing where it's like you play one token, you press one button game over game over. Put yeah. The more game takes in. three seconds. Yeah. And then, and that's it. So let me just explain to you the trauma response that I was having when I got there and you know, you were Beth you come over and you hand me like the, the scan as you go car or yeah. whatever and I, I like I think I went to ask Beth and I was like oh hey wait Beth and then somebody grabbed her and like she walked away and I was like how does it work yeah like you know because like and so like I'm sitting there and like you know Addie's going over to like all the um they're like little I'm gonna put big air quotes around rides but you know it's like a it's like a like a convertible car that you oh, can go yeah. and like touch the thing to and like the car like gently yeah. like rocks back and forth or whatever so within the first like five minutes I've scanned my my card on this thing yeah like, six times right and you're you just know? like now look Addy not for nothing I'm sure you're having a blast but like if we just wasted six tokens so you could rock back and forth we're at zero tickets right and now we're at you zero, understand well, it's like we are not accumulating any wealth okay over here. none right. whatsoever like when it comes to a racer time we're not getting any racers. we're not getting any none you know we um, might not even be getting tootsie rolls at this right, point I, okay I, I, I mean, for shame for shame for shame <laughs> can't have that those are three tickets per do you remember there was an arcade at tanglewood mall once a time ta- once upon a time i do know I do oh remember, my gosh yeah. where we went and we like i don't know it was like a pinball machine or something. And there was like a button on the back that would, I forget what it did, but it either it allowed us to just basically print tickets. It, it, yes, it was. It was. <clears throat> yeah. So it was, it was like a, like a mall arcade and, yeah. um, which I don't even feel like these are, are necessarily like things anymore, no. but you know, it was, it was exactly just like Chuck E. Cheese, except like the food court was over here. And then there was just like this dark place with like loud machines that are all bright and colorful and everything. And yeah, so we're, we would go over and you know, there was, there was some game that had like a, like a late, laser or something that like if you could just like like wave your finger in front of or maybe it was a button or something like that but like you could like instant high score it over and over and over and over and over again yeah and if anything it almost became like a chore because you're like all right well you know we're racking up like a thousand tickets but this is taking forever even though we're cheating right yeah (laughs) um but then the the gag was you know so like we we literally accumulated like a thousand tickets and you go over to the counter and the person's like whoa (laughs) like yeah you know no one's ever had this many tickets before ever (laughs) right and so but i remember the thing that we did was it was like it was one ticket per one tootsie roll and so we're like can we have a thousand tootsie rolls and i do remember this you just came out with these just like giant bags uh, of tootsie yeah. like i didn't count them <laughs> yeah. yeah but like that was the thing like i was like like it occurred to me i was like they they probably this is almost like trick-or-treating or something like if you need to go up and like exchange a ticket to trick-or-treat it's yeah. like if you came up with a thousand tickets at my house i wouldn't even have a thousand pieces of candy to give you right you know and so i'm like i'm like so impressed that they were so well stocked at this mall arcade yeah that they they were able to accommodate 1000 tootsie rolls <laughs> and like, then we had tootsie rolls forever we did yes yeah. like way too many that was yeah. that was like one of those times as, as a kid and i think you had this maybe with swedish fish but like you get like like way too much of it and like i would sit on my computer and play games and i would just sit there and like pop these tootsie rolls like one after the other and it's like there becomes a real health issue when yeah. you've had too many tootsie rolls this is i mean it's a learning experience it's one of those things like if you if you if you're brave enough to just give your kids all the candy do they want like they'll just make themselves sick and then they'll just sort of be off it yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. me yes exactly yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. me and me and Allie, i feel like i've had a couple of these these conversations uh here lately like where um just this past weekend uh addy really likes bubble water oh. which is which is basically like you know like seltzer like like Lacroix. yeah, yeah, you yeah know, like or, sparkling water yeah exactly yeah. um and we have <laughs> one of those little um like ice pellet machines that makes like the really good crunchy ice or whatever yeah and, we have that too and so Addie loves, she loves bubbly water and she loves the ice. And so like we're, I'm sitting there and I was, I was actually watching some of the games that were on TV over the weekend for, for fantasy football reasons, which mm-hmm. I believe I won. Um, and you know, I'm sitting there like take, taking the, the whole experience in and Addie is sitting there on the couch and, she, and I keep asking her to, 
to place it on the armrest, which is like a nice flat square surface. And instead she keeps wanting to put the cup with the ice, like just an open top glass cup with the ice on the couch next to her. And I'm like, Addie, put it on the armrest. And she's like, I'm, and she's like, no. And I'm like, Addie, it's going to spill and you're going to get wet. And it's going to be really cold. And it's just like one of these things where it was just like a battle. That was just sort of like, I'm like, I'm just going to watch this play out. And so she sets it down and sure enough, it does spill. Right. And she looks at me and goes, it spilled. And I'm like, I know, I know that it spilled. Yeah. And, um, you know, but of course it's water. So, I mean, it's like, and, yeah. and it's leather. So, you know, I just went and like scooped it up and it was like, it was no big deal. It was easy to clean. But it was one of these moments where I was like, as a parent, I'm like, I could have picked this battle. I could have been like, Addison, put it on the armrest, like hard stop, you right. know, like, like, uh, like, uh, foot is down voice, yeah, you know, right, from inside yeah. out. Um, but like for one, not really my parenting style. <laughs> um, I, again, I don't really have it in me that much. Um, if anything, there, the moments that I do have to do that, Alice has to like, look at me and be like, Ben, like yeah. step it up, man. Yeah, you, you're going to say something. You're, you're yeah. going to do something. <laughs> okay. okay. Need some support here. Yeah. <laughs> Allie's yeah. the tough one for sure. Um, out of the two of us, but, um, this is, I was talking to Alice about it and I was sort of like, like trying to unpack this experience of, of like what you're supposed to do, because it's one of these things where there is no substitute at times <clears throat> for experience. So like, like one of the things that I feel like I am mentally already attempting to prepare myself for is the inevitability of Addison sneaking out of the house when she's a teenager Uh and it's like one of those things where it's like i feel like at some point in time she will do it right she likely will get caught or get in trouble or something will happen a phone call will come from like a like a friend's parent who's like i just caught our kids out together you know like whatever right and it's like it's like one of those things where it's like on some level i don't like i think she needs it like i think that needs to happen right like, organically like i can't just put the fear into her and make her feel like the consequences are going to be so massive as to like like preventing her from like attempting things right you yeah. know like, like i i think back i remember when yeah just being in high school and like going to friends houses and it would be like you know it's sleepover and it, you know it's like midnight or something and their bedrooms in the basement and the basement has a door to the outside and it's like okay let's go like you know meet up with other friends other around friends, the neighborhood yeah, yeah, or whatever yeah. and it's like i remember just like going and doing that and of course i didn't feel like i would be in trouble at all because you know it's not my house <laughs> like, oh, yeah, whatever yeah, of course yeah. let's go <laughs> no big deal <laughs> no big deal if i get caught who cares you know? right you're the one who's gonna be in trouble yeah. they're, not, they're not gonna yell at me <laughs> exactly they're gonna yell at me you're just i'm you're a bad influence you know <laughs> <laughs> um but i remember going out and doing that and just thinking that like wow it is like you know the very i can't believe one that your parents like don't even notice or two that like you know you don't even like feel the risk of it or whatever or like you, I, I don't know but like it now I think back and I'm like did did his parents know and they just don't care you I, know I, that, it's this like, is, yeah like, like you know like clearly you're going outside or whatever but like you don't have a car so where are you going to go it's like I, we, we know you're just meeting up with your other friends and you're just in the neighborhood and you're going to come back Cause you, you know, what are you going to, if you co- you like you, the parent know that if the kid doesn't come back by the morning, then they will be in trouble and they don't want to be in trouble right? and they don't want to be in trouble no matter what. So they're not actually going to do anything like wrong. It's just like, are they going to be out? Like what, what is, I, I mean, I don't know. I remember like setting off like bottle rockets or something. So I guess maybe that's like loud in the middle <laughs> of the night, <laughs> but like, is anyone hurt? No, right. You know, right. Like, did they know or not is the question. And like, if they knew, was it just like, yeah, it's like, this is just, you know, it's fine. We trust them not to go like ruin their whole life running around the neighborhood at two in the morning on a Saturday. Right, right, right. Yeah. And, and it almost to me at times feels like like they did know. And this is this is almost like extended um, sort of like I don't even know what the right word for it would be like. But but it's it's sort of like allowing some amount of boundary testing inside of what is otherwise like largely a vacuum. Right. It's sort of like it's like, OK, like there's there's not tremendous risk like i don't think they're going to go and do something actively dangerous but to them the prospect of of you know sneaking out or just simply doing something when you're not supposed to be doing it like has its its underlying appeal and it's like sometimes that just ends up being enough but um i mean that's that's like i think what was scrolling through my mind a lot over the weekend just because of the silly little you know so alice and i ended up talking about it like three or four times um 
because there there are instances like this, like where where Addy will, you know, it becomes a force of wills, so to speak. And and it's hard to know, like, at what point in time you're just being like extremely uh, intense about some type of like, you know, rule or detail or where you set your cup that it's like it's like eventually in life. Like, I do not think that Addy will get to be a 20 year old person who sets cups on un- uneven surfaces. Like, right, I, yeah. I am not afraid that she is learning like like a bad habit that will be, that will continue <clears throat> to be a bad habit forever and ever and ever. And like in this particular instance, it was like she experienced the outcome of the spill, which was ice cold water being doused all over her legs. It was right. like, you know, like she wasn't harmed <clears throat> by it, but it was a negative experience. And she seemed to realize and like right. recognize like, oh, OK, I. I, you know what you did tell me to put it somewhere else and now i realize okay okay i mean i'm probably giving a lot of credit to how much addy processed this as a well good, i you mean know, i know, mean just barely over two-year-old but i mean yeah did she like have a whole conversation with herself about the you know merits of listening to dad versus just like you know trust tr- trusting your words versus having to experience yourself probably not All right but like there were natural consequences and you're right she probably like learned spilled drinks not good yeah yeah, um, yeah and that's um that is always a tricky one that's like i've heard i've seen some parenting things where it's like you know you don't have to sit there and like force your kids to like eat food at the table just because you made it it's like you know the the thing you have to do is not let them get past dinner and then just give them something else. It's right, like, right. If you want them to eat the food at the table, like don't yell at them for not doing it. Just let them experience the hunger because that, that is the natural consequence of not eating. Exactly. And it's like yeah. you, the parent in the moment, it's like, you don't want your kids to be hungry. Like I want them to be fed, but it's like, I also, it's like, it's like you can go for like one night of them experiencing mild hunger in the name of them eating food at the table for the rest of their life you know well, let me let me yeah let me respond to that because this is like one of the funniest things i think sometimes about me is that like i am not a big eater like we we've talked about it plenty of yeah. times I, I sort of consume approximately the the diet of a bird um you know which is just like i i tend to like leave like I, I, it is not even uncommon as an adult for me to not, like not be able to like finish like an entree at a restaurant or something like that, yeah. which is just sort of like an odd characteristic about me. I usually talk too much and I think that my like digestive attention span like runs out of juice mm-hmm. and it's just sort of like, oh, well now you're not like you, you've sort of like you're, you're satiated and now I don't want to be like over full. And so I just don't keep eating. Right. Um, on the flip side of that, though, I do think like frequently if I'm ordering like Chinese takeout or something like that, I will sort of be like, OK, so like I want like my combination dinner. So like right. the, the chicken and the rice or whatever. And it's like, oh, but I also want a soup and I should probably get like some spring rolls while I'm at it. You, and like you for someone who does not eat a lot, you are one to like add extras to your order. Yes. In it, a, it, a like, usual I, thing. I, like I even have, we were at dinner last night and you came back with like an extra order of like fried pickles. And it was like, well, this is amazing. I'm so happy you did that because I wasn't going to order them. But now that they're here, of course, I'll help myself. <laughs> yeah, well, why not? Yeah. I know. Yeah. Like, for the table. Amazing. If you had it for the table, that's amazing. But it's like, it's surprising that you ordered them because like, you ate like one. You know? Yeah, yeah, I know, yeah. I know. Um, but this, is, like, so this is. Uh, I was thinking about this also over the weekend because of the fried pickles. Where I was like, I wonder if something happened at some point in my life because I don't have a distinct memory of like going to bed hungry or or having that be like this thing where like I was like, you know what? I always want to make sure that there's too much because I'd rather have you know like too much and just eat accordingly than get to my last bite and be like, oh goodness, I could I could probably use another. Mm-hmm. another one or whatever yeah um and but you're right like it's like an it, it is something i do um and the other the other thing i have no idea is like growing up i think it was i mean family of five a lot of people like every time we went out to the restaurant so yeah it wasn't common for us to do like an appetizer yeah and i think that there was probably this like allure to getting the appetizer that was mm-hmm. always just so like uh novel and that has not worn off despite being having been like able to go out and buy my own dinner for 15 years that has always been my interpretation interpretation of this behavior on yeah, you yeah, yeah, is yeah. that it was our parents aversion to appetizers and desserts at restaurants yes yeah which, i mean which I, this are the perceived aversion to such things i don't know maybe we got them all the time but you're right when it was like if we could get an appetizer that was like it 
I mean, it was Christmas morning. Right, it's like, right. I mean, we're getting nachos. Oh my gosh! For the table? The, what? This is oh, like we never get nachos. I this know. is the best. We get food before food. Right. You know, yeah. yeah. This is be so There's, awesome. Like, it's like whereas no I'm way sure, I'm eating my chicken I'm tenders sure, now. <laughs> I know, exactly. I'm sure your parents like. I'm sure if you're like you know like yeah even now it's like you know what of course I'm not getting you extra food. You're not even get, you don't even eat the hot dog we ordered for dinner. Why would I get you something beforehand too? Yeah. And it's like no the extra thing is way better than the dinner itself obviously of course yeah, yeah yeah so i mean that 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 probably is a huge part of it but like there are so many things like like on the flip side like soda for example i've talked about this before like i remember getting to college sort of having like a like you know my my grocery money that i would go and then like you know buy like 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 soda with because it yeah. was just sort of like i can buy whatever i want and i can buy the 12 packs and i can stock my fridge and just like whenever i want to go grab one i'll go grab one like no one here to tell me no yeah and i quickly burned through that like like, yeah, you know, it was sort of like I, I like went through my college years and, and I was like all all about it. And I got like one year out of college and I was like, this is too much. It's like, too much. Um, it's a lot of soda. Which I is I, like similarly like with to the original point with candy, you know, it's like if you let them over eat, like they're going to take it too far at some point in time mm-hmm. and they're not going to want candy anymore. I don't want and we always said this about our good buddy, John, where it was like when you go to their house, it was like there was just like bowls of candy and like delicious treats it's seemingly everywhere. Yeah. And I have no clue whether or not because they that, that like none of those kids ever seem to touch it ever. Yeah. You know, it's like, but you would get there and you'd be like, man, bowl of Reese's They'd like, be like I will yeah. take one for certainly. Mm-hmm. Um, and so I never knew if this was like a parenting tactic, like th- that their parents figured out and they were like, you know what? Just have it be everywhere. And then they won't covet it. They won't want it. Right. You know? Yeah, exactly. I've seen this is a, a parenting tactic that I desperately want. I like want to buy a new fridge just to employ this one tactic. Oh, what you got? But it is the snack drawer in the fridge. Okay. Where it's just like, I like, you know, we have a bunch of snacks and stuff in the pantry that like I frequently have to tell my kids like, no, you can't have that, whether it's like gummies or like granola. You know, I don't know. Chocolate bars descri- disguised as granola bars or sure, goldfish yeah. or pretzels or something or, you know, potato chips, something I don't want to. I have to like I feel like I need to limit because like it's kind of junk food, too. Yeah. yeah, yeah. You I know, you. I whereas you. like but then I'll just see like I've seen this hack before. It's just like just like one don't buy and don't don't make that available to them at all right. and instead just have a drawer in the fridge full of things that you are okay with them eating at any time of the day without your permission at all right like if at any point of the day you want to go grab a cheese or a, a fruit or anything from there you don't need to ask you can just go get it like whenever pre- you want pre-authorized okay I like pre-authorized this idea. Yeah. and it's just like then it's like you don't need my you can just go get it and i don't care because it's all good for you right and then at the same time all the other stuff isn't in the house too. Right. <laughs> and it's like, it's not because sometimes I'm like, it just like, if we just didn't have the gummies, it wouldn't be a problem. I wouldn't have to sit here and say no, because they wouldn't be on the table at all. Right. <laughs> right. Know? Yeah. Yeah. No, that's, that's a very good point. It's a very good point. Yeah. So, that, that becomes like the, the difficult between yeah. having like the fun, delicious treat that can be there for like special occasions versus like, you know, yeah, like, how available of them made it right and so it's like i but like one my fridge does not have said drawer on it um so there's that and then there's like oh yeah but then you constantly have to stock that and it's like i guess you'd have to stock it but i'm already stocking the pantry with stuff i don't want them eating i feel like you should just go get like a filing cabinet and just put like dad's special drawer on the front of it and like crude crayon drawing and like you can like open it up and inside of dad's special drawer is just all the available available snacks yeah (laughs) I guess uh, maybe you need them to be fridged. I'm not sure. Yeah, yeah, I guess. I guess a lot of times the thing, the reason you need the fridge is because a lot of times the healthy snacks parents are more okay with are like things that need to be refrigerated. Yeah, because it's like cheese or fruit or vegetables or something. Yep. And you know, but I'll, I'll see people be like, there's like, yeah, they put like dipping sauces or like ranch packs or something in there. It's like, yeah, whatever. Have as much ranch as you want as long as you're dipping carrots in it. You know, right. I don't care. Right. You know. So hilariously, there's been a um, Alice was giving a ride home uh, to her sister the other day who had like a bag of celery sticks just that she was like munching on throughout the day I guess and so she left them in Allie's car and for it's been really cold you know for like weeks on it not weeks on week at least a few days so the celery sticks were like living in her car and Addie like was getting super jazzed about the celery sticks so she would get in the car and she would have her celery stick and be just like 
happy as a clam. Right. And so, but yesterday, well, the past couple of days have been like unseasonably very warm. And so we got out there and we we're like, oh yeah, no, <laughs> it's been too like, they've been cold for like, you know, a couple of days while she had them. And then it's been a couple of days of warm weather and it's like, we can't, we can't get yeah, these to her. These are no longer good. But she's on um, and she was so upset that wow. we were like, Addy, you can't have the celery sticks. And I was like, I cannot believe that like probably one of the biggest battles we've had with her over a snack ever is celery, which I ordinarily I'd be like, have as much have as, as you much want. As you, want. Like, you are burning calories while eating it. So yeah. <laughs> like, yeah, this is a net zero on, on impact. So anyway, um, but yeah, I was like, I can't, I can't believe that like one of her, one of her most upset moments has been over celery. That, that is pretty funny. Yeah. Cause it's like, yeah, typically it's like most people would have to like fight with them to take a sniff of celery. Exactly. Yeah. And why would you? I'm, why not would a big, you? I'm not a big celery fan myself. Like yeah. I actually don't even like it if I order like my wings and they've put celery inside of the box next to the carrots. I don't want the carrots. Carrots yeah. are fine. But I feel like the celery like affects the flavor of my wings and I'm like, I don't want it. I don't no, want I don't it. even put it near I, it. I, I can, I know that this, this chicken, I can tell it was close to celery. I can tell it was close. Time. No good. No good. No gusta. It leaves, it leaves a stench. Yeah. 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 Anyway. All uh, right. So um, let's see. Let's circle back to Chuck E. Cheese. Okay. I'm sorry. Yeah. 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 We're, yeah, we're, we're still we're, there. The party's still going, I know, man. I know. It's okay, so, so one, I think I'm looking forward to a future where I've been to enough of these with enough of the same parents that like the kids know what's up and I don't need to monitor them uh-huh. and that I can like be Go. like into the games with the other parents Ooh. where it's just like, oh, you guys ready? We're hitting the basketball hoops. Come on. Let's go. You I mean, know, I'm not going to lie to you. I desperately wanted to go and do the little basketball shooting game. Yeah, like, I was like, I was like, oh, and they, have, they had like a football toss as well. And I was yeah. like, I was like, if if not for being in like, like max out parent mode right now, exactly. where like, you know, I was like, all right, well, Addy, like, you know, what do you want to go and play? All right, let's go play that. Like, cause all these are brand new experiences for her. Yeah. Um, I was like, but I'm like, I'm like longingly like looking across the room, like the basketballs rolling down for like these other yeah. dads and moms and stuff. Who were exactly. Shooting, and it's just like, ah, oh, now that looks like a good time. I know dude. Okay. So one, in addition to Chuck E. Cheese on Saturday, we went to the uh, Roanoke Starcade. Yeah, okay. On so hilarious Sunday. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I, I have heard of the Starcade. It is associated with Center in the Square, where yes. where my uh, my aquariums are. So it's like yeah. I, I've been in the building where the Starcade is like a million times, yeah. and I've I've never actually been to the Starcade. It's uh, so yeah, I went to it and like. Um, one, it is a comically long walk. It's like, follow the starcade, you know, stickers and signs. And it's like, you keep thinking the next corner has got to be where it is. And it's not, it's like down the next hallway, then the next hallway, then a tiny staircase, then through those doors. And then you get in there and you're like, wow, this bill, we, we must be at the far back of this building. And then it's like, okay, there's one more room. And then there's another room. And then there's another room. It's like, it's very big once you get there, but it's separated into a bunch of different rooms anyway. But in there, it is, I mean, if you're in the area, you've got to go to the Starcade because it is so fun. Like, you just, it's the same thing. It's almost like Chuck E. Cheese. It's, there's no tickets or anything. No tickets, But you okay. just pay to enter, and then all the arcade games are just free to play as much as you want, as long as you want, including things like skee ball and the basketball machine. Oh, man. Oh, and then you know what the good news is? Is at this point in my life, I've had enough Tootsie Rolls forever. Exactly. I, I literally I don't even ne- want it. You could tell me that, Ben, you will never eat another Tootsie Roll again, and I'm fine. Yeah. No, I, I will. I have no qualms. Honestly, Whatsoever. and what is so great about this particular formula is that one you're right it takes off all that pressure of like yeah when you were 10 and you're like I feel like I really need to ration out whether or not I'm aiming for tickets for prizes or just like gameplay because like the gameplay is probably more fun but the tickets will get me stuff yeah. and it's like one that none of that's even on the table it's just there for the gameplay whatever you want to play is great and this is what I immediately like me and Luke walked around um, and did a bunch of the different games and stuff and eventually he found the skee ball machines and like I like what was so I was like oh this is like a secret weapon right here the skee ball machine it was like because you can just play skee ball endlessly that's me you know yeah. and it's like it's like yeah. one of those things where it's like I was playing it and I was like this is like filling a weird void in my mind we're like I always meant to get really good at ski ball, but the opportunity is so sparse. It, it's so sparse, and not to mention the ticket yield back in back in the day yeah. for ski ball was miserable. Miserable. It was like you'd hit like three ten thousands, and it would be like three tickets, and you're yeah. like, "What would it have what been if I got thirty? Right. Like, you know, like oh man, it yeah. was it was so yeah, it was it. Was, I don't. I I think it was like incorrectly. Yeah programmed yes but, but that is what i remember about skee ball but yeah. i agree i always wanted to play like I, even as an adult i have like investigated what it would cost to buy one. Oh, exactly and so i was sitting there playing it and i was like this is so great because i mean i probably played like 10 rounds of skee ball in a row Ugh. and it's like 
that's but like in order to even like get good at skee ball it meant you would have had to continuously drain tons of quarters into it yeah. just for like you know and then you get to play for like 10 minutes and this was like I was like this I man at some point in my life I'm going to be able, like I intend to come back here and to spend time on the skee ball machine because at some point in my life it will come up that I will be with a group of other people and they'll be like guys let's let's bet or, you know let's let's play some skee ball and it'll be like oh be prepared. Oh, you're is, about that, to get wrecked yeah. by you guys don't understand. First of all, like quickly and it's like very quickly. I don't know if this is true of every ski ball machine, but I what I immediately figured out was that like, oh, the fourth ball is double points. So oh, like, yeah, I did not know that. I know maybe, maybe this was just to this machine or something. Okay, okay. but it was like, oh, 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 first of all, you can take advantage of at least one ball for sure. And then it was like also quickly became apparent that like the the top corner Buckets for like the ten thousand points, uh-huh. like don't go for those just at all. Okay, just too 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 hard, too hard. Okay. And if you miss, you get like bottom points. Whereas if you miss going down the center for like the like five hundred or the, whatever, the, yeah. If it's if it's like a thousand, two thousand, three thousand, four thousand, five thousand. Like if you miss going for the five thousand, you're still gonna get two thousand. Sure, you know. Yeah. Okay, so like miss to the center, don't miss to the side. I see how the strategy is unfolding. Yeah, right. Okay. And it was like okay. okay, yeah. So I I quickly was just like okay, I now recognize what my average score is gonna be. I'm like I'm getting a feel for the balls. All right, this is like I'm, I'm like I was like this is amazing. I can just, I can sit here and play skee ball all day. It amazes me how quickly your brain is able to like hack this type. Type of stuff yeah. though, where it's just sort of like all right I'm, I'm getting the lay of the land it's like okay i mean it feels like ski ball is like a sport that basically is like whether i mean you, what it really comes down to it seems like the, the the most simple version of being good at it is simply how well is like your your heft to toss ratio That's true. yeah like it's like it doesn't really feel like you you would take that much else into it but you've literally already unpacked other details of the game that like never even occurred. exactly and it's it, like yeah. and often that's all you need and you're right though it is like i i immediately started going and it was like okay i can almost comfortably hit the three thousand mark and it was like you know if i was trying to go for the four thousand i was like it's considerable more heft to go just a little bit further interesting and then okay. to the five you really got to be going for it and if with that much power like the odds of going to the left or right a little really start ramping up you start to start to okay yeah. okay um this is this is I'm, I'm sure i'm gonna get it wrong now but um there there is a scene in name of the wind where they're talking about like the weight of the dracus and if it falls from however many height like it's gonna fall so much harder because it's so much bigger and so like you know the damage of falling from any height is worse and quote basically Basically, is like oh, it's the square cube ratio is what she was describing, and she had no idea. Right. Um. But so it's funny that you talk about like the extra heft required to go from like three thousand to four thousand because uh, just this past week, Ethan, the editor uh, for Super Carlin Brothers, now was talking to me about um. Oh my god, tungsten is this material? Have you seen any of like videos related to tungsten? Or I anything? did not. He was telling me about it, and I looked up because I was like, because as he was basically its main feature was that it's heavier than it looks. It it is a remarkably dense metal. Yeah. Um. And and, and I think much more dense than lead. Okay. Um, if that gives like any any baseline to like work off of or anything. But it is a it, it's like absolutely fascinating because um, it is like it's this it's this like super super hard metal. I think it like like begins to rival diamonds or something like that. But it's also like like I don't know useful in just a variety of different uh like manufacturing sure machining type of purposes but like when you you can go online and buy a cube of it and if you were to buy like a half inch by a half inch cube i think it weighs like you know 0.23 pounds or something and then if you go up to like a one inch cube then it weighs like 2.2 pounds and if you buy um like uh like a three inch cube it's up to like um like like 17 pounds or something like that and then if you buy a Whoa. four inch cube it's like 42 pounds whoa and so it's just like it's it's unbelievable how adding one inch in every direction like takes the weight to such a, a remarkable level so right. if, if, i mean people may have seen it on tiktok or something but if you just want to like youtube search like um Oh my gosh, the, the metal, tungsten cubes, a four inch tungsten cube. It is so interesting to try to like watch somebody pick one up right. because it like breaks your brain. Right. You know, like, it's like what? it's like it can't be that heavy. How can that much weight exist in such small form factor? So like if you watch somebody um, like I think there's that that YouTube channel, like how ridiculous yes. where they, they drop stuff off the yes. thing or whatever. It's just like it's I mean, they've done like bowling balls and like other, you know, interesting heavy objects, anvils and stuff like that. But then when they drop this thing, it's sort of 
of like, what? Like, how could it be? Yeah. It like defies physics. Um, <laughs> but so the thing that I got really fascinated with though, is I'm like looking at it and I'm trying to like understand it and like, you know, what it, what it is like in terms of like a rare earth metal and like its value. And there's like a part of me that is like looking at it because to buy the four inch cube, I think is three to four thousand dollars whoa you know so it's like it's like people buy them almost like um like a curiosity cabinet back in the day like where you might go and like like see just unique physical things yeah um this is like one of those like where like even at go fest i was thinking um you know it would be it would be such a fascinating thing to be like okay if you can pick up the 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 cube with one hand yeah. from the top, you know, like without using any other hand, then you can win like a prize or something like right. that. Like such a fun thing to like allow yeah. people to come and like, have you ever seen that like gold bar trick where it's like, if you can get this gold bar through this hole, you can keep it dude in my rock climbing days there were moments where it was like it is worth flying to wherever <laughs> this is because my forearms are so strong yeah, right like now the it's finger like, strength needed to get the leverage on yeah, the gold yeah I mean, like, it, people i think have won them people before. have won yeah. It. yeah it is doable but it is like extremely difficult extremely yeah. difficult yeah so this is exactly like that but then then i'm looking at it and then i'm like i'm like curious because like you know a gold bar the reason you want to go and win a gold bar is because it's then just remarkably mm. valuable yeah and i'm like is tungsten in this like weird, weird space right now where it's like, where like it, like it's like you could buy like a brick of gold, you right, know, oh, it's right. like, it's like, is it like that? Where like, like a hundred years from now, will tungsten be like the new gold? And I'm just like, whoa. Cause there, so much of me like wants to buy one, not the, not the four inch one. That's is absurd. But like so much of me was like looking at it and I'm just like staring at this like silver cube online. I'm like, gosh, I would really enjoy having this. Like I would put it on my desk and, and it would be there and it would and occasionally you know the the small group of people occasionally somebody might want to come in and, and pick it up right exactly exactly and that's what you're aiming for ben that like that like that tiny shock value at some point at some point at some, at, point. At some point yeah this is yeah. this is the skee ball exactly. yeah. yeah. thing it's like oh yeah we're all just having a casual game of skee ball never mind that i'm like secretly amazing <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah yeah exactly yeah, yeah. Oh, wait, wait, wait. sorry what about like 50,000 points. What ass? I, I got lucky. Don't worry about it. No, no, no big deal. No big deal. deal. <laughs> I'm, I'm not spending hours at the Starcade. Don't worry. Yeah, right, right. I have a season pass. <laughs> I have a season pass. It's good. <laughs> exactly. You don't need to worry about that. No, now so I desperately want to look into ski ball like championships because there, there must oh, be. I like, mean, no doubt. Yeah, the people must be like professionally good at ski ball. But what I want to know is whether or not they go for the, the, the upper, you know, the corner. Oh, ones. yeah. Like, are they aiming for the corners? Yeah, because it's like is because like with bowling, for example, I, I know that like for for people who are great at bowling, like you could watch them, you know, from from across the way from like a few lanes down or whatever. And I mean, they can throw strike after strike after strike after strike. And the big question is not necessarily like there because to me, every time time I roll a strike I'm like whoa what a remarkable yeah. thing that just happened did you guys see that <laughs> um but people who are good it's like getting a strike is not difficult and even getting like a perfect game I think isn't unlikely for people who are quite good yeah it's uh, and what was explained to me at one point in time is that like when you're a pro bowler you're playing three games and so three three frames or whatever of uh, of rounds bowling or whatever and so the I think the big score is whether or not you can clear 800 maybe sure. i think is the big thing so three perfect games would be 900 points and so it's sort of like the question is can you roll 30 strikes in a row right and it's like it's like having a 10-sided dice and it's like you can roll not if it's like if you can roll like if you have like a 90 percent chance of getting a strike uh -huh. like you know it's like if you had like a 10-sided dice you'd be like yeah you're not likely to roll a 10 Right. You're more likely to roll a one through nine. But if you rolled it 36 times, do you think you'd never get the 10? Right. Exactly. It's, like, it's yeah. possible. Right. But and most of the time you'll still get the strike. But all it takes is that one miss. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. Yep. And and so I think what I'd be curious about for for people who do competitive like skee ball is whether or not those those back and right, like whether or not it's worth the risk. Of, I mean, because it feels it doesn't feel beyond the realm of possibility that people get, could get good enough to know the heft well enough to to be able to consistently roll and just drop ten thousands. Yeah, but but like it is so high risk, high reward. Right. That like the I mean, because most of the time I I suspect pro bowlers who don't get strikes don't don't throw a gutter ball. 
Right. You yeah. know, like, like I suspect it, they're either picking up the spare. Exactly. Yeah, or like you, yeah. you need the multiplier with bowling in order to like really start to like build, build that score. up. Right. So I think, I think to me the big question or, or like, is it that fourth roll where it's sort of like, yeah. it's like, no, people might go for it on the fourth. It's worth like wasting one. But if you get 40,000 or 20,000, right. then you almost, then you just won. Then you just won. Yeah. yeah. It's like, like do that obviously. But, um, anyway, yeah. So now, now I want to know more about competitive ski ball. I know, I know. Or yeah, I want to know if there's always like a two time multipliers ball of that. Is that, standard or was this just the machine i was on right i don't know but yeah so i had fun doing the ski ball but speaking of um picking up on things quickly okay i'm going to circle back one more time to chucky t's because we're about at the end here yeah absolutely and so i'm sure you remember ben as um when we were kids whenever i think around middle school time they would you know introduce here's the fundraiser we're going to be doing this year you know you got to go door to door and sell wrapping paper or whatever yep yep, yep, and there was um the way they would get you hyped to do it is they would bring like the the money machine or the cash box or whatever and it was basically just this giant um like a, like a telephone box like a telephone box made out of clear plastic with a leaf blower attached to the back yep and they would have filled that thing with just you know a ton of dollar bills maybe a couple of fives in there or 20s or whatever yep and then you just let someone in there for 30 seconds turn on the leaf blower and whatever you can catch you can keep right you know and they would always bring, you know, one, you know, there'd be like the a whole school would be assembled to watch your little thing and they'd tell you all the things and here's the things you win. But like the finale would be that someone was going to get to go down there that day and like, you know, go catch the cash or whatever. And it was like the idea of getting to be in that box when you're in middle school and have just no money at all. And it's like, oh my God, I, you mean I can, I can, I can keep as much cash as I can catch best I know, day yeah, of my I life. Know. I was like, I mean, there's no way in the world I don't walk away with at least like $53. I know, right? Probably even a thousand or like a million or something. Who knows? <laughs> yeah. you know? I, I bet they have one million dollars inside know, yeah. of that thing. <laughs> yeah, like they're willing. Yeah, that's the thing. Like you don't even. It doesn't occur to you as a kid that like they're not going to lose money on this. Right, you know? right, right. Yeah, yeah. It's no, just uh, single dollar bills in there. You know? Right, right. Yeah, three hundred one dollar <laughs> bills is still plenty of bills for the effect. And chances are the entire fundraiser for the school and all the kids hoping to get to go in there. Yeah, raises just so far and away beyond so, that three hundred. So. so much more than that. Yeah. And I remember, you know, there would be like the fundraiser, and I remember watching the kids who actually actually like sold enough to get in there there'd be like three kids or something right and i would always be so disappointed that i was like so excited like how much are they going to get like oh my gosh this is going to be like life-changing money or something right and right, they'd right. walk out with like 32 dollars or something <laughs> <laughs> like maybe if they were really good at it or right, something right, right yeah, yeah. And it was like man that just doesn't seem like even as a kid i was like that doesn't seem like as much as i thought right i figured right. it'd be at least a few hundred you it's know like, not even a game boy game <laughs> i know right yeah. yeah like what do you get with that like was it was it worth it but so Anyway, all that to say at Chuck E. Cheese, if you are there and you are the birthday boy or the birthday girl or whatever, they have the the money machine, but it's filled with um, tickets. Yes. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Um, or I guess they don't they don't have physical tickets like they used to that like come out of the machine anymore. It all just gets loaded onto your card, but they've got just a bunch of, of like pieces of paper with ticket values written on them that will fly around the machine. Right. And you catch as many as you can. And then, you know, you, the birthday boy gets that many tickets added to your account or whatever but because um, a lot of the kids there are very little and they want them to get I guess something or maybe they're just scared Uh because everyone's watching too so I can see where if you're like a five year old everyone's like ah I I think even in middle school like as much as I wanted to do it I always like had like an anxiety inside of me about like people like watching me and being like what is he doing what is he doing why isn't he why isn't he doing the obvious technique yeah you know what's the matter very high pressure in your shirt throw it in your pocket grab the ones on the floor right 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 right. yeah Yeah. whatever it is so we we get in the machine so they're letting Luke go in and they're like okay and like mom or dad you can go in with him and Luke's like daddy daddy so I'm like all right and, and, and like I had no idea I was gonna get to go in the machine right at all and all of a sudden I was like oh my time is here <laughs> it's happening my middle school self is like is like beaming like oh my god I'm fine I'm in the machine too right <gasps> oh, this is best. so exciting like like Luke this is great for you but the, you know what this is great for me too I'm, <laughs> like, I'm a, really a, living this up it's a big day for dad <laughs> it's a big day for dad okay yeah. I get to be in the cash machine right now this is gonna be amazing and so you get in there and like we watched another kid there was like an other father son duo in there before us and oh, then, you know they did all right whatever guess yeah. Some notes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah okay what's gonna work well, yeah, what's gonna get some technique here and so we get
get in there and I'm like, you know, of course the things are just flying around. If you ever tried to catch it, you know, a leaf falling out of the air, it's almost impossible. Yeah. 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 Very tricky. Yeah. But so what I did like quickly discovered the technique was was to like lean lean over and create as much surface area as I could for anything flying upwards to run into. Okay. So I'm just sitting there palms out arms out and stuff is just landing on my chest and I'm just like grabbing it as fast as I can and like just you know get going there and the 30 seconds goes by and I've collected a bunch and Luke has picked up a few things here and there but we hand the stack to the girl and her eyes go like why she's like Oh my God, you got a lot. Like, <laughs> like, like, I was like, what really? <laughs> like, did we, do we do good? And they came back and they were like, this is the most tickets anyone has ever gotten out of the machine. <laughs> I, was like, I was like, that is, the, you could not have given me better news right now. I didn't even know I was going for a high score and I got it. You know, what? Right, right. Yeah. Oh my. So the moment came and the moment went as well as it could have. It went as well as it could have. We got like 815 tickets out of the machine. That is amazing. <laughs> yeah, that I was. So amazing. I, I think I'm going to give Luke. I, uh, I I caught a majority of uh, the most amount of tickets, uh-huh, but I yeah. think Luke personally grabbed like the five, like the big money ticket, like the 500. Oh, but, like, okay, yeah, so yeah, yeah. which which counted for a lot. So good for Luke on that point. But the um, when, when we handed them the stack, you could tell this was this was more tickets than they were accustomed to receiving. To, to seeing, so I think yeah. just even just sheer number of papers grabbed from the machine was uh, was higher than usual. Incredible as well. So I was like, man, that was that that wow. There wow. was there so. was literally nothing that surprised me less than when mom walked over to me and was like, "Hey, Jonathan just got the high score for for the ticket booth." <laughs> I was like, "Of course he did. Of course he did." Yeah, that was really yeah. fun. Did, so. did he know at second 17 every every <laughs> slip you grab is worth triple or something like No, but I will pass that on if you're ever the person in the machine with your child, lean forward, just create as much surface area as you can and just grab them off your chest or your hands or wherever they fly. Okay. That's okay. the trick. That's my trick that I'll give to you so that you can go buy stuff off the prize wall. Now I feel like now I feel like we're just going to have to host every birthday for our kids at Chuck E. Cheese. Oh, now and I know. Now the pressure's on. I know, yeah, and but like, like now it's like one of these things where it's like it's like now it becomes like a family tradition. It's like like Luke or Nick or Nate or Addy or whatever. It's like, you know, like their, their 22nd birthday. And it's like, are we seriously going to Chuck E. Cheese again? I'm like, yes, we yeah, are. Yeah, come on. Birthday girl. Let's get excited. Get the machine. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> this is going to be fun. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like wearing like reverse duct tape on your arms yeah, or something like yeah. there we go yeah um, uncle jay and i have a have, we have uh, a system yeah it's, it's gonna be good it's gonna be good you're gonna be able to finally get that basketball <laughs> <laughs> that's the thing you get to the prize wall and the prizes are like so bad yeah, you know? yeah, like, yeah. like when you're a kid you're looking up you're like god if only i had six thousand tickets i could get that what i don't even know that vcr or something <laughs> right <laughs> it's it's like, like, why do they still have a vcr uh, exactly <laughs> nobody's ever wanted it i know yeah so the prizes are not are not great even with our even with our bounty they like they, they give you the wall they're like anything from this point over and down and anything in the counter and it's like what Luke ultimately got was like this little like um the big thing he was able to get was like a like a magic kit okay like okay. for like kids like sleight of hand stuff which we did go home and do and you know we figured a few of them out and it was it was fun That's but cool. it's like I'm like just staring at it and I'm like you got to make sure you keep everything in the box if you lose like a piece of a trick it's not going to work anymore That's it you know and yeah. it's like it's hard to like convey that like because he's like really into Harry Potter right now. So I think, you know, the idea of doing magic is great, but it's like what you have to understand is that like real magic is just lying to people. <laughs> <You know? laughs> like the point it's all, you know, it's like, how do you convey that? It's like all showmanship and it's all like, oh, this is how it works. So you know how it does it, but it's going to look like this to the audience or like it's, you know, it's you're you, this. I don't know. It's like very tricky to explain sleight of hand to a six year old. Yeah, you know? yeah, no, I know. But like, was it not the case when you were in like like third or fourth grade or something? Still a little mm-hmm. older than Luke, but mm-hmm. you you did like a magic show as I like did. your your talent. Yeah. It was in second grade. Yeah, second for grade. Sure. Okay, yeah. so he's not far off. He's not far off. Yeah, yeah. So, I mean, so he could knows? he could follow in in the old man's footsteps. He could, you know, he yeah. could be a little a uh, little magician down there doing right. some stuff. Yeah, there was one that was pretty easy. It was just like this little slot, and you know, you like put a coin on it, and then you slide it into the other thing and the coin disappears and it's like what happened he if it, I, I was able to teach him that one pretty quickly and like show him like then you just spin this thing and then it'll push the coin and it's it's really and he was like oh okay okay and then he got that one and that one was fun okay but like some of them it's like it requires a bit of like dexterity a lot you know to like do the thing as well yeah i, I yeah. think that that's like one of the things that's like kind of like sh- like it's like taking me away from from trying to learn any like the sleight of hand magic yeah. is like it does feel like you have to be like 
like good at stuff like that. And yeah. I'm, I like, I mean, I'm like, I don't even, can, can I do this? Like, I mean, maybe I should just put my mind to it and it'd be okay. But like, it's, it's never felt like as attainable. Like even like when I watch people do like the bridge, like when they're like, like um, doing like a deck of cards and yeah. stuff like that, I can't really do like the, like the, the flip up shuffle thing mm-hmm. where it like, it like all falls magically back into place or whatever. Yeah. So I'm like, I'm probably not, I'm not, I'm probably not going to be like, like uncle card tricks over here. <laughs> <laughs> uncle card tricks. I think my problem anytime I've like, uh, like even as I was going through this, I was like, okay, I see like, oh, okay. I see how it works. That's pretty clever. This is pretty fun. Like even like, even when I'm showing it to my six year old who has no idea how magic works or right. whatever, or like, yeah. or, you know, he's like a prime target for being fooled by this deception. I'm like, it's so obvious how I'm doing it. Like, you know, like I don't, I don't believe the trick is working <laughs> right, like, right, like, right, to right. me. There's no way because I know how it works. There's no way I could possibly show it to someone and fool them because they'll just immediately be on to me. Right. You yeah, know, and yeah. I'm like, like that, that's what gets in my way when I'm like, no, no, people will absolutely fall for magic. You know? Right, right, right. Yeah. Like they, they just don't know. Yeah, yeah, people, yeah. That's, the cool thing about magic that I like is that like people intrinsically know it's not real. They're like, they know they're being lied to and like they like want to be tricked. Yeah. You know, it's yeah, like this yeah. weird relationship between like the viewing audience and the trick that's happening. It's like you don't like part of you wants to know how it's done, but like you also don't. Right, you know? right. Yeah. It's like, it's, it's just it, like, I think the, the wonderment is really like what makes it like so overall enjoyable. It's yeah. just sort of like, it's like you, you want to know, but you don't want to know. Right. Because it's like, it's like you, like what's fun is the, the small amount of time that you might sit there and be like, how, how did he do it? Where did, they go? Where did the ball go? Where did the ball the, go? The ball go like, like go into the other ball is like a special like ball that has right. like, like an opening, but yeah, you can't really see the opening and yeah, you know, it's like, yeah, I feel like so often I'll watch whenever I see magic. I'm like, the only way for that to have worked is if they like, you know, did this and did that. And there was like a string back there or something. It's like, and there's just no way they like did all that. And it's like, they did. That is how they did it. That is it. Yeah. It's yeah, like, yeah you yeah. can't believe the links they went to trick you or it's like that they couldn't have done that and then let's said like stacked the deck before the trick started or something it's like of course they stacked the deck <laughs> yeah, right, yeah. Like, like like this this is how the show works yeah. like no no it was not a legit deck of cards okay <laughs> yeah. right right yeah, yeah yeah i remember when we were kids there was a magician coming to town and uh dad being like you know the the local <coughs> celebrity that he was was like supposed to be like up on stage to be like sawed in half yeah and i do remember like i think he was driving me to school one morning and i was like dad are you nervous nervous about being sawed in half and he goes I'm not gonna lie I am a little nervous about it and, <laughs> and then, then I was really nervous about it like I was like wait no really like even as a kid it was sort of like I was like I knew it was magic and I knew it like wasn't like you know like real real but I was like but it'll still be on stage there still will be a saw and he still will be taken apart and it's like what if something goes wrong right <laughs> like you know and like when dad expressed his own worry which maybe he was just like being a dad and just being like yeah. oh you know bro, oh, maybe yeah. a little bit but my worrisome mind was then just like, oh, this is going to go terribly. <laughs> I know, I know. And then I think dad was like late for some reason. So I think that they were like, like literally like waiting to do like the grand reveal until like dad got there and he like the news ran long or oh. <laughs> traffic from Roanoke to Rocky Mount or something like that. And so like it was one of these things where like I'm just sitting there and just like like paralyzing like anxiety and worry just being like, what is going to happen? What is going to happen? Dad, get here already. OK, yeah. oh, like, my I, gosh. I need to either see if it works or doesn't work because I can't have my dad saw it in half. <laughs> in front of all these people or at all <laughs> or at all <laughs> oh man so anyway he ended up being fine i actually n- now that i'm thinking about it i'm trying to remember if he even actually ended up getting on stage for it he may have just been too late and it just, they saw some i don't know I some don't other know. poor soul yeah some some other poor soul is just half a person now <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> walking around like what happened to you I was like oh, the magic <laughs> trick went wrong <laughs> oh man the, the things that concerned me as a kid the, it, it, yeah it, there was just i'm trying to think something happened over the week. oh it was so we were at um we went to this like like uh christmas like walkthrough thing last yeah. night and before we go in to do it there is a um like a little tavern or whatever and you had brought up like a carbonated drink for luke to have with dinner yeah. and he like sort of was like look i've got it and he like did like you know like like tilted oh, it back and forward yeah, a few like times. Shook it. yeah and you were like oh no, no no luke you can't do that like or else it'll explode and literally i went back into like like child brain and I was like, Jay, what he just heard was explode, explode, like, like atomic bomb. <laughs> right, right, right. And like, like, these were the things that people would say to me as a kid where they were like, oh, you gotta be careful. Otherwise it'll explode. And I'm like, oh my gosh. Right. Yeah. Like, really? <laughs> like, <laughs> it is. Dude, I remember once upon a time and I don't know what the, what the ramifications of doing this are at all, but like 
I remember we just had some like batteries and we were down at the creek or something and one of my friends was like you can't put batteries in water it'll like explode or something Uh and it was just like I was like no it won't (laughs) you know Uh and I remember like going to drop and him like grabbing my wrist like do not do that like it's going to explode or something you know I was like I remember just dropping the eventually dropping the batteries in the water to zero effect at all oh yeah no yeah (laughs) I mean like nothing happened nothing happened nothing happened it was like i don't know but it's like the fear in their mind was like so real yes that like yeah. you know, if you drop this double a in the water like i know we put these in like all sorts of electronics everywhere but like the 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 how close we are playing with fire if that if water touches that it's the end you know right. well and i mean this is again you know it's like it, it goes back to like <clears throat> addy like spilling the cup of water type thing it's like yeah it's like you can it's like And I can't tell because I was clearly just so ridiculously oversensitive to all of this type of stuff. Yeah. Like, like even, even going like watching fireworks. I remember like it used to be the case that like, you know, you go for the 4th of July, there'd be fireworks exploding overhead. And like, at some point somebody explained to me that like, you know, bits of the, of like the paper that were wrapped around the, the firework itself might like kind of trickle down over the people. Yeah. But like in my mind, there was like shards of metal falling from the sky. And I was like, I can't believe like people will be hit tonight by falling firework explosion debris debris Mm -hmm. yeah and i'm like is everybody just okay thinking it's gonna hit somebody else because it's gonna hit someone right you know and it's like and it's like no it's like it's paper falling out of the sky it's like it's just right like you know it's completely paper falling out of the sky and also like there's this grand illusion with fireworks that they're like right above your head when they are like very far away yes yeah yeah yeah. i I remember seeing like like uh like (laughs) disney fireworks from like a different perspective once upon a time and it's like two miles behind the castle or something like right, that but yeah. it's like like when you're watching it you're like oh there's there's like somebody like like the, if you go over the castle like right there just lighting them on the ground right you now and it's like <laughs> yeah, it's like no they're no. very far away yeah like yeah you're the odds of you being hit by the paper are just you're not going to you're, yeah, yeah yeah like yeah. they're they're so far away from you um although i do remember coming home one time like the one of the one of the shards had fallen next to me and i like brought it home and it was like this was like such a prize and i got a piece of the fire from from it this is like fourth of july from fourth of kids, july not yeah when Disney. we were kids yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah okay okay yeah fourth of july as kids at the high school where they're not as far away from you they're just sort of like behind the stadium right but right. yes i remember thinking it was like oh my god what a, like a like a prized possession i have a charred piece of firework right you know? right well that's yeah so and like of course mom and dad what they're attempting to instill into us is that like fireworks can be dangerous and we can't go and play with things that like you know shoot off sparks and stuff like that but like what what was translating to me was that every single night the fourth of july happened somebody who was involved with the setting off of the fireworks was being carted off in an ambulance due, <laughs> due to like severe burns or something right. like that which yeah. i mean certainly you know obviously like fireworks can be and, and you know can be dangerous if you're not yeah. careful about like how to handle them and stuff mm-hmm. like that but i don't think it was to the extent that i thought that it was right like, i was imagining really dark and bad things happening. right like, like it's going to be raining fire on people exactly yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. so anyway i just gotta I, you yeah. just had like a worst case scenario brain like your whole life my basically. whole life it, yeah. was just, it was just pretty much built into me yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> anyway we went long so uh guys as ever thank you so much for tuning into this week's episode of the pop as ever if you got any feedback for us about any of the various things be sure to shoot it over to popcorn culture pod at gmail.com I tell do, us all your ski ball strategies ski ball strategies whether or not we should invest in tungsten mm-hmm. possibly and probably yep. um yeah any any good stories that you got for us you can shoot them over to popcorn culture pod.com uh at gmail.com rather um also if you would like to support the show you can do so at patreon.com slash popcorn culture we've got a variety of tiers including after the final pop which is just an extra like 15 ish 20 minutes of jay and i talking after each week's episode um it's always a lot of fun and if you sign up even just for a single month you get access to the entire back catalog for that month so if you're like man i caught up on popcorn culture and now i want more to listen to it's a great way to get access to just a whole bunch more um of things that jay and i didn't talk about in the episodes um but otherwise until next time pop pop 